Number seven. Even as she sought to leave the Philippines to find work abroad, Joanna Demophilis knew of the dangers that could befall her overseas. She had heard stories of Philippine workers subjected to abuse or even death by their foreign employers. Nevertheless, she asked a distant relative, a recruiter who works as a domestic helper in Hong Kong, to help her get a job abroad. The recruiter helped her and offered to set her up with a sponsor in Kuwait to become a domestic helper there. Demo Phyllis was eager to accept it. She could make 10 times as much per month in the oil-rich Persian Gulf country than if she remained in the Philippines. In May of 2014, Demo Phyllis left her hometown and flew to the Middle East, becoming one of the hundreds of thousands of Filipinos to move there for work. She would not return home alive. In September of 2016, Demo Phyllis called home for the last time. She insisted everything was fine, but her younger sister Joy suspects the call was being monitored. Demo Phyllis was only able to speak to her family three times a year. During the last phone call, Demo Phyllis said she planned to come home in 2018, but after not hearing from her for nearly a year, Demo Phyllis' family reported her missing. Investigators tried to find her through the quality agency that recruited her but discovered it had closed down. In February of 2018, quality authorities discovered Demo Phyllis' body in the freezer of an abandoned apartment belonging to a couple who had hired her. Police didn't discover her body until investigators set their sights on her Lebanese employer who had been accused of falsifying checks. The autopsy report concluded Dima Phyllis was beaten to death before she was stuffed in the freezer. Officials said she had probably been killed more than a year earlier. She had several broken ribs and contusions and trauma to the pelvis and the kidney area. The autopsy further showed that she has experienced repeated beating and half many wounds that showed signs of healing. Demo Phyllis employers Nadir Isam Asaf and his wife Muna Hasun reportedly fled Kuwait way before the discovery of their maid's body, triggering an interpol manhunt. They were later arrested in Syria. Asaf, a Lebanese national, was taken to Beirut while Hazun was held in Damascus. According to some reports, Demophilus was unconscious and not dead before she was stuffed into the freezer. Nadir Isam Asaf reportedly confessed to the police that he had put Demophilus in the freezer himself before she was dead. He claimed that his Syrian-born wife Mona Hazun got addicted to torturing the Filipina the Kuwaiti criminal court decided to punish the couple with a death sentence by hanging. Number 6 The true story of what happened to 16-year-old Nessie Paris is one of the most terrifying tales of a person being buried alive. Paris had mistakenly been buried alive and apparently woke up in her coffin only to die before she could be freed. Three months pregnant, she reportedly fell unconscious after waking up in the night to use the outside toilet at her home. It is believed she may have collapsed in an apparent panic attack after hearing a burst of gunfire in the nearby town. But when the teenager started foaming at the mouth, her religious parents called the local priest believing she had become possessed by an evil spirit. Relatives told how the priest tried to exorcise her, but she later became lifeless and was rushed to the hospital, where three hours later, doctors declared her dead. Paris was buried in a wedding dress she had recently got married in. A day after her funeral, her husband, Rodi Gonzalez, was visiting her grave when he heard banging and muffled screams from inside the concrete tomb and raised the alarm. He called a guard over to listen to the sounds too, and he confirmed he also heard them. The family arranged for the tomb to be opened, which took several hours, and it was too late. Footage of the incident shows Paris family members breaking open the tomb using a sledgehammer. 
Once extracted, Paris, still in her coffin, was transported to a nearby hospital. According to reports from her family members, a glass window on her tomb had been shattered, and she had bruises on her hands. A cousin, Carolina Paris, told Primero Impacto that the body was still warm and that she felt a faint heartbeat. Once at the hospital, the staff tried to revive the teen, but they eventually concluded that she was clinically dead. Paris was ultimately reburied in the same mausoleum she'd been pulled out of hours before. Doctors believe Paris may have suffered a severe panic attack, which could have temporarily stopped her heart activity. Another hypothesis is that the teenager had a cataplexy attack, an abrupt, temporary loss of voluntary muscle function, typically triggered by a strong emotional stimulus such as stress or fear, during which the victim maintains full conscious awareness. She may then have died from lack of oxygen after waking up inside the closed coffin. Number 5 In April of 2011, a story about a Hamilton College student who made a very creepy replica of Barbie in a life-size form went on the news. Everyone knows that the dimensions of a Barbie doll could never exist naturally in real life. Galea's Lion's life-size Barbie is 6 feet tall, has a 39 inches bust, a tiny 18 inches waist, and 33 inches hips. A real woman with the same dimensions would weigh just 110 pounds, giving her a BMI of 16.24. Even her feet would be disproportionate at a tiny US size 3. A registered dietitian in New York who specializes in eating disorder says, a BMI of under 17 is considered underweight or anorexic that puts you at high risk for negative side effects like osteoporosis, amenorrhea, not being able to menstruate, and low heart rate. And if Slayan's mannequin was a real woman, she would have to walk on all fours due to her proportions. Slayan, a former anorexia sufferer, knows the implications of being underweight all too well and built the doll as part of her recovery and as a means of raising awareness about the dangers of eating disorders. With the help of her neighbor, Slayan created the giant Barbie out of wood, chicken wire, paper mache, and two big balloons. She then dressed her doll in a size double zero skirt she wore at her thinnest. Number 4 On June 12, 2012, a Florida teacher at a community center near Tampa Bay was arrested on child abuse charges after police said she encouraged her students to cut each other. Investigators said it was all part of her bizarre cleansing ritual. Danielle Harkins, 35, convinced a group of seven former students to cut their skin to let the evil spirits out and then burned the wounds so the spirits could not get back into their bodies. She allegedly gathered six boys and a girl to a spot by the pier in St. Petersburg on a Saturday, June 9, 2012, and began the strange religious ritual by starting a small fire. The teacher then told the teens to cut themselves to cast out demons lurking in their bodies and cauterize the wounds to prevent the spirits from returning. Police said there was apparently some chanting and then dancing around this fire that was taking place. Two kids were injured and one sustained a second degree burns after the teacher allegedly poured perfume on his wound and lit it with a cigarette lighter. One of them was cut in the neck with a broken bottle and the wound was cauterized with a heated up house key. Harkins taught literacy skills at the Lilman and Asian Neighborhood Family Center for four and a half years. All of the kids were former students of hers. None of them told their parents what had happened, and they were reluctant to describe the details of the ritual with the investigators. Police learned about the ritual after one of them texted a friend about it, and the friend told his parents. 
Harkins is charged with one count of child abuse and one count of aggravated battery. She was put on leave from her teaching position and held on a $55,000 bail at the time of her arrest. Police were hoping the students who were involved in the ritual would give them more information. Unfortunately, none of the teens were talking, so no one knows what else she might have been doing. As of 2014, Harkins was released from prison on her own recognizance. Number 3 In 2011, the Bridgeyos family thought they found their dream home in Auburn, Pennsylvania. The big house was built nearly a century ago and has been occupied by many tenants over the years. It was an easy move for the couple and their four kids when they bought the home back then. The home inspector never found anything wrong with their dream home. But when Katja Britsius and her husband decided to add some insulation to their baby's nursery, they opened up the walls, a disgusting stench permeated, and the mold made some family members sick. That's when they discovered that the walls were already full of things that made Katja shock and horrified. Behind layers of drywall were dozens of dead animal carcasses wrapped in old newspaper from 1930s and 40s. There were also other strange items stuffed into the walls like half-used containers of herbs and spices. The discovery was alarming by itself, but perhaps more horrifying is the fact that insurance doesn't cover the problem. The family has spent about $20,000 to fix it. After finding all the dead animals, the family sent the artifacts to an expert in Kutztown to find out why someone would leave them in the walls of the home. The expert said the former homeowner was likely practicing Dutch magic and used his process to heal ailments and gain physical and spiritual protection. It's sometimes referred to as powwowing. According to the family, the mold found on the rotting carcasses hasn't gone away. The family isn't even sure if all of the dead animals are out of the house. The family says it still needs to tear out some more walls to check for any more dead animals. Since insurance won't cover it and they've run out of money, they started a GoFundMe account. Number 2 Doctors in the small Chilean town of La Boca have found a calcified fetus in the uterus of an elderly woman who says she never realized she got pregnant. Stella Melendez, 91, says she has had a lump on her belly for many years but had no idea that she was carrying a fetus. Doctors say it has been in her uterus for over six decades. The fetus is calcified and poses no health risk to the woman. It was not until she recently suffered a fall that doctors spotted something on her x-ray that caused concern. The doctor said I had a tumor and that they needed to operate on me, Melinda said. But when a second x-ray was ordered to confirm, doctors couldn't believe their eyes. The mass they were looking at turned out not to be a tumor but a fetus. For the elderly woman and her family, the finding has been a quite a shock. Melendez's husband of 74 years, Manuel Gonzalez, died in January of 2015 at age 91. Gonzalez made a living as a fisherman and a boater in a coastal town. One of her few regrets, Melendez says, is that she and her husband were unable to have children. Doctors at the local clinic considered surgery to remove the fetus but later determined that in this case operating on a 91 year old patient was riskier than doing nothing at all. Melendez says it hurts sometimes but more often than not it's just an uncomfortable lump. On a deeper level she says the lump on her belly actually reminds her of her husband and the child she dreamed of having in a very bittersweet way. Number 
A couple who bought a new house in Colorado got the fright of their life when they discovered a nest containing 150 snakes underneath their home. Shannon McFadden and Royce Robbins had moved into the house of Rushmore Street in the town of Elizabeth back in 2018, but it quickly became clear that there was a den of snakes under the back of the property. To their surprise and terror, the critters started popping up out of the decking. As the weather warmed, more snakes appeared in the yard, under the deck, around the foundation, and even inside the home. Luckily, the reptiles were only garter snakes and unlikely to do any real harm to a human. These snakes are non-venomous. According to Shannon, they started seeing a garter snake's heads popping up in between the wood slots on the ground level patio. The couple hired an exterminator who discovered a large snake den underneath the back deck. More than 150 snakes were removed from the property and relocated. The couple spent about $8,000 on a new deck, shed, and pest control. Shannon said she had no idea about the snake infestation when she and her husband purchased the home in November of 2018 after deciding to share their ordeal.